Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening, and thank you for the very nice letters and telegrams commenting on our opening show last week. Tonight, the new year being somewhat established, we're going to present a spy story. It's called Beirut by Sunrise, and it was written for us by a very fine new radio writer, Richard Chandley. My name in the play is Mildred Gideon. And I'm Frank Grady. The background of our opening scene, the Mediterranean Sea. A ship is moving easily through the winter waters, sailing away from Beirut, Lebanon. Aboard are travelers of all types, all nationalities. The one of particular interest to us at the moment is a young lady, American, single. Her name is Mildred Gideon. And as we start our play, she's in her cabin writing a letter. Darling sister... As I told you last, this Mediterranean cruise just hasn't been what I expected. We've sailed from Beirut, but I'm still shaking. After yesterday, honestly, I was positive I'd never see this good old ship again. It's hard to believe my trip to the Near East began as disappointingly as it did. That first stop at Port Said was dreadful. Not that I thought there'd be perfume nights, but I was hoping I'd feel a little of the... Well, the... The mystery of it all. When we left for Beirut, the only stimulating thing was the new dinner companion at our table, a Mr. Haroon. At least he looked interesting compared to that awfully dull Frank Grady I'd been forced to sit alone with until now. Frank Grady, Mr. Haroon. Mr. Grady. Uh, this is Miss Gideon, Mildred Gideon. How do you do? Miss Gideon, charm. You are both American? Yeah, yeah, we're Americans. Akron, Ohio. Miss Gideon's from North Dakota. Teaches school, third grade. How charming. Haroon, that name's... Uh... Persian. Yes, of course. Uh, they say Beirut's really something to see. One should see it at sunrise for the first time. A thrilling sight. Well, swell. We hit there in the night. How about a sunrise date, teacher? Well, I really hadn't planned on... All right, all right. Okay by me. Can't say I didn't offer. <laughs> well, Beirut, here we come. Beirut, here we come. Honestly, he just made me wince. Companions are half the fun, but really, you, you couldn't commune with anything with Frank Grady around. I simply couldn't share Beirut by sunrise with him. It was around five when I awoke. I felt a little thrill when I realized the engines had stopped and we were there. It was still black when I reached the deck. Just for a moment, I was afraid I'd have company. <sighs> but I was alone. It was marvelously still, like everything holding its breath. Then just a crack of sunlight, and spires of minarets began to appear, then domes, then the whole sweeping outline of the city rising out of the night... It was just pure Omar Khayyam. I floated with it, completely carried away by the sight, that magic quiet. And then, wouldn't you know something had to spoil it? Down on the dock below, some man had come stumbling out of one of the shadows, honestly just reeling. It was still pretty dark, but I could see he was a sailor, an American sailor coming toward the ship. He looked up. I saw his face. Then he swayed and fell. Tried to drag himself. I don't know why I did it, but there just wasn't anyone else around any place. And, well, he was an American, and I felt sorry for him. What, what happened to you? May I help you? S S Sultan. Oh, dear, I'm afraid you've had too much to drink. L let me help you. Look, listen. Sultan's turret. Fifteenth step. Tell it to... T tell... Then I saw it. A knife buried in his back. He just 
died. I backed away. It was horrible. I couldn't think what to do. I just turned and, and I ran. Oh, 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 madam. oh I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to run into you. Oh, you're an American. What are you running from, madam? D- down the street, back there on the dock. Oh, you're, you're wearing a uniform. Are you police? Uh, oui, madam. Beirut police. Uh, I presume you are from the passenger ship. Uh? Yes, that's right. On the dock, there's a dead man. Oh, may I see your passport, please? What? Uh, yes, uh, it's right here. Ah, thank you. Uh, Miss Mildred Gideon, huh? Oh, pardon. Uh, it seems to be in order. Thank you. Uh, may I be of aid to you? Back there. A dead man. A sailor. Th- th- there's a knife in his yes, back. Of course. Now, what is it you wish the police to do? Do? He's lying there dead. Oh, isn't it a little early for dead bodies, Miss Gedeon? A sailor? Oh, pardon. You're sure he's not just a drunk? Huh? Drunk? I told you there was a knife in his back. Ah, the tourist American. Uh, eh bien, um, Miss Gideon, I shall accompany you to the dead body. Well. Do you see? There's the ship. I was standing right up there on the deck. Mm, oui, I see. Now, where exactly? Just at the edge of those packing cases. I don't want to look. Miss Gideon? Please. I couldn't bear to see There is nothing here. What? What? But this is the exact place. Yeah, sure. I swear. They must have moved him. They? Well, someone... Miss Gideon, when a man is drunk... He wasn't drunk, believe me. There was a knife... A knife. Then there should be blood. There is no blood. Look, I saw it. Hmm. It was dark, Miss Gideon. Uh, possibly the shadows... I swear to you, I saw it. He was dead. Without a body, there is little we can do. You agree? Yes, but I... You don't believe I saw anything, do you? Oh, something, yes. You know, Beirut is a modern city, but it still has charm. Sometimes a visitor is overwhelmed. <sighs> I don't understand it. I, I, I'm not wearing my glasses, but... It was so real. Mm, eh bien, the report will be filed. Now, if I may escort you back to the ship. All right. I'm terribly sorry to have bothered you. I felt absolutely ridiculous. The policeman couldn't help thinking I was only a giddy, excited tourist. Saying any more would just make it worse. I looked back at the place... It was daylight now, and everything did look different. There wasn't anything to do except try and push it out of my mind if I was going to enjoy Beirut at all. When I got to my cabin, I put some cold water on my face, and then I went up for breakfast. Hey, you're late this morning, teacher. Overslept, huh? No, no. No, I was just buying some film for my camera at the ship's store. Good morning, Mr. Haroon. Good morning. <laughs> well... Hey, Root, here we are, eh? See the sunrise, teacher? Oh, thanks for the suggestion, Mr. Haroon. It was really something. Did you see the sunrise, Mr. Grady? Why, sure, through my porthole. Not from the deck? No, oh, I just got out of bed, took a look, went back to sleep. Oh. Yes, it looks like a pretty good town, a little on the gaudy side. You're signed up for the tour, aren't you? I haven't yet. Well, you better hurry. Are you going on the tour, Mr. Haroon? I am familiar with Beirut. Well, then you must know those little out-of-the-way places that tourists ordinarily don't see. Some. The Street of the Seven Nightingales. Oh, mercy. I'd adore seeing something like that. Well, tours are so commercial. You want to see some of that hoochie-coochie stuff? Why, teacher? That's not what I mean, Mr. Grady. If you were at all (laughs) sensitive, you would... Uh You understand, don't you, Mr. Haroon? A touch of Omar Khayyam. That's it. That's it exactly. To be a part of it. To see and feel antiquity with someone who... I would... could show you, Miss Gideon. You must think I'm rather forward, but, but I... But d- unfortunately, I have business. Oh. Oh, I see. The tour is really excellent. It won't disappoint you. 
I've taken it myself. Yeah, sure. There's still time to sign up. We'll have a big time, just like Port Said. Oh, I, I guess I'd better go get my thing. Ah, that girl. I'll go put your name down. See you this evening, Mr. Haroon. You'll have a nice time, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, well, goodbye. Meet you at the gangplank, teacher. Hurry up. You can't say I didn't try. I was sure it could have been just like the Rubiat with Mr. Haroon. But there wouldn't have been any sense in wandering about by myself. If I started seeing things again like this morning, I wanted witnesses. And Frank Grady was just the person to keep my feet on the ground. The Bazaar of the Husat el-Din, 300 years old. You will have a half hour to observe the interesting native handiwork and to make purchases. Some joint. Just like a Hollywood set, eh, teacher? My name is Mildred, Mr. Gray. Yeah, sure. Hey, get a load of those shoes they're selling. Wouldn't you get the razz if you clumped around home in those? It's the style here. Well, sure, I realize that. But wouldn't you get the razz? <laughs> I think I'll buy a pair. Hey, Sahib. The marketplace of Rashamir, 500 years old, a former slave market. You will have a half hour to observe the interesting native handiwork and make purchases. Slave market. This dump doesn't look like the ones in the movies. Really, Mr. Grady, do you have to compare everything with home? Use your imagination. Let it come to you. The camels coming in, carrying new slaves for sale, and the slave dealers cracking whips. Can't you see it? Hey, that's pretty good. Did you read that somewhere? Forget it. Just forget it. I gave up after that. Frank Grady was going to be Frank Grady, and that's all there was to it. Just when I was ready to go back to the ship and find a good book the to read... The next point of interest is El Kassir. The Sultan's Turret. The Sultan's Turret. It seemed familiar. I was certain I'd heard the name before, but it didn't seem possible. Then I remembered the sailor. The dead sailor. He'd said Sultan's Turret, 15th step. And I hadn't told the policeman. It was a big stone tower, broken down in places, but it was solid and real. Proof that I hadn't imagined that poor man. My heart was simply pounding. Built I couldn't wait to get inside. Built by Sultan Ahmed Kassir. The upper half has been condemned as unsafe, but there is a museum of interest below. It was dark inside, just little lights near the showcases. I looked around for the steps. In one of the corners, I saw them curving upward. They were roped off. I edged away from the others, praying Frank Grady wouldn't see me. I slipped under the rope and started up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It was pitch black. I waited. I had the feeling there was someone else there in the dark. Then a tiny white something caught my eye, a piece of paper. I reached down to pick it up. Something brushed against me. I saw a light above and ran up. Anything to get out of the dark. I looked at the paper in my hand. There was writing. It said, ship, six. That's all. Well, Miss Gideon... <laughs> Mr. Haroon. I have been waiting for you. It had all happened so fast I couldn't make myself think. That thing on the stairs, and now Mr. Haroon. Just out of nowhere, Mr. Haroon. I am sorry, Miss Gideon. I really didn't mean to frighten don't, you. Don't... Don't come near me. All right. What are you doing up here? The same reason you are. I, too, like forbidden places. I knew the tour would arrive here about this time. Fortunately, I finished my business early, so I came to meet you. 
Is that so frightening? No. No, I guess not. I... Oh, just let me catch my breath. I thought you might like me to show you what I know of the city. You are all right now? Yes, I, I'm all right. Mr. Haroon, was there anyone else up here just a minute ago? No. You and I are the only curious ones. Oh, no, no, no. There had to be someone. I've got proof. Proof? Hey, teacher! Mildred! Where are you? Ah, uh, Mr. Grady. Please, let's wait till they go. They'll think you're lost. Let them. I've got to talk to you, Mr. Haroon. Somebody... I've just got to. Well, I know a charming place. We will talk there. We waited for the tour to leave, then I took hold of Mr. Haroon's arm and we started down those awful stairs. It seemed like hours to go through the blackness, and I shuddered all the way to the bottom. Then we were out in the sunlight, and I felt like breathing again. We walked. It gave me a chance to pull myself together. Finally, we stopped in front of a little place. It didn't look like anything from the outside. Then Mr. Haroon opened the door, and we went in. What do you think of it? Oh, it's it's just charming. Oh, this garden, it, it's it's the Arabian Nights. It must be very old. They say Omar Khayyam once visited here. You can tell. Come fill the cup, and in the fire of spring, your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. You know the rubia. Some of it, I remember. Ah, oh, dreaming again. It just can't be real. Oh, it is real, all right. Mm. Miss Gideon, back at the Sultan's turret... Mm, what? You said you wanted to tell me something. Oh, yes, that I... Well? It's been so strange all day. First I see beauty, then death, then it was gone. And suddenly terror again, and, and now this beauty... All without warning. I want to remember this place without anything to spoil it. Please take me somewhere else. Aren't you carrying this romantic theme a little too far? I beg your pardon. What do you mean? I mean... All right. I will take you someplace a little less overwhelming. almost sunset. That's funny. I didn't realize it was so late. Just this place, and we will go back to the ship. Uh, uh, up these stairs? If you please. Oh, the view. Oh, there's the harbor. And there's our ship. We'll make it back in time, won't we? In here, Miss Gideon. Nice room, but I, I don't... Oh, the view from the window, it's lovely. Is that what we came to see? Not exactly. Mr. Haroon, I don't know whether I'll be sad or glad to leave Beirut, but, but this time with you has, has Miss been... Miss Gideon. Yes? Time is growing short. We must discontinue... Or... I know it's growing short, Mr. Haroon. Short the time, but long my memory for that garden and the moments there, I... I'm not sure whether you are extremely clever or extremely foolish. Foolish? Oh, Mr. Haroon, please, not foolish. I thought you realized what I truly feel. This place is not romantic, Miss Gideon. You can stop it now. Stop it? You have caused me a great deal of trouble, and we are through playing games. Mr. Haroon? What happened on the stairs of the Sultan's turret? What time is the meeting? Meeting? Uh I don't know what you're talking about. Death and terror, Miss Gideon. Come here. You recognize this? The sailor. The dead sailor. You murderer. You murderer. Oh. I oh. ran. Just ran. The vision of the dead man on the floor of the room still in my eyes. 
And he was coming after me. He was going to kill me. I knew he was going to kill me. I didn't know where I was or how to get back to the ship. It got darker and darker and the streets twisted and turned in front of me, shadow after shadow growing bigger and bigger. I, I had to get to the ship. I didn't know how. Oh, my leg. I can't run. Who's there? Who's there in the dark? <laughs> it was the native quarter, and a man, a dirty, fat, ugly man, was coming toward me. I backed away from him. He slithered after me, and then I felt my back against a wall. Walls all around. There wasn't any way out. And I saw a door just out of reach. I edged toward it. It was a big room. Dim and evil-smelling. And there were people, but they didn't pay any attention to me. They were watching a dancing girl weaving through a greasy yellow light. I saw another door slid along the wall toward it. Keep away from me. Keep away. Mr. Haroon, let's get back to the ship. Hurry, please, no, please. No, no, just a minute. I gotta know what time that drop is. Drop? The message you got at the Sultan's turret. I know you got it or you wouldn't have ditched me. What? The film, documents on film, teacher. Little white slip of paper tells place and time and you got it. You forget your act and I'll forget mine. The sailor, he said, tell it to... To Frank Grady. Sailor was my contact. You got in the way. No, no. Come on, give me that paper. Let go. Look, teacher. Give me the paper, or I'll kill you. Now I mean it. Ready? What? Miss Gideon. What? Oh, no. No, don't touch me. It's all right. Everything is all right, I assure you. All right? Where am I? A pilot's launch, Miss Gideon. I'm escorting you back to the ship once more. The policeman? Hmm. You are so sorry you had to go through as much as you did. It was imperative to find out which was the spy, Mr. Grady, or you. Spy? Dealers in state documents collected and sold to the highest bidder. We knew someone would meet the sailor. Oh, I see now. Then you didn't kill... Them. No, no, no. He was stabbed in a street brawl before he could reach the ship. Unfortunately, you complicated things too, for us as well as for Mr. Grady. I'm sorry I had to treat you roughly at the house on the hill. Because you thought I... And I thought you... Oh, Mr. Haroon, I'm so glad I was wrong about you. They are closing with the ship. Can you walk, Miss Gideon? Yes. Yes, I think so. I am staying here in Beirut. I wish you a pleasant trip. And bon voyage. Perplexed no more with human or divine. And tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign. Thank you, Mr. Haroon. Thank you so much. Tonight, we would like to thank Edgar Barrier, who was Mr. Haroon, 
Ben Wright, the police officer, and Byron Kane, the Lebanese guide. Yes, and again, our thanks to Richard Chandley for an exciting story. Next week, the theater. Not as it really is, but as it seemed to Richard Powell after he had seen his fill of a certain type of backstage story. And so next week, a new comedy called A Poetic Tragedy, written for us by Richard Powell. Thank you for listening. We'll be back again next week. Good night. Good night. <laughs>